And with that, welcome to another edition of the Audi Tech Talk. And on behalf of the entire Audi communication department, allow me to say, first of all, thank you for you having found the time to be with us online in direct touch and to attend another technical deep dive. We're calling once again from our studio right next to the factory in Ingolstadt here in Germany where the cars are actually being assembled. First of all, we'll give you an overview and then of course we hope to hear from you in your questions and your opinions. You of course can send them in as we talk. You can see there's two icons at the top hand of the screen, the hand, which means you will be live on the show or via the chat function, just send in your questions. And what's it all about today? Here, for car aficionados, it's the best of the car. It's steering, yes. Well, steering, obviously, it goes without saying that the car needs to go in the right direction. And if you steer with a steering wheel, it's going in the right direction. But what's at the back of it? What are the requirements for the steering? This is what we're going to be talking about today in the studio. One of them is my colleague here, Tobias Sonner, from the department. And of course, technology is what we're here all about. Indeed, that's the right word. The car is about to see the biggest changes in its development for decades. But in all this development, all the way to electric mobility, of course, we should not forget the virtues of a good car. And this is something that I would like to discuss with you here today, because, of course, it's the system of steering. It is the biggest interface between the car and the human driver and that's what we want to talk about and we will hear today that there's a lot of engineering a lot of r d that goes into this round steering wheel now the big question toby is how can we that we actually affect that engineering indeed there's two things there's the steering system itself and the steering wheel but let's start by talking and looking at the steering system the basis is an electromechanical steering now with the fusion of a number of systems dynamic steering and dynamic all-wheel steering of course we can increase precision and the handling and all in all you will find we've got five different steering systems on offer at audi but above all it's a steering wheel it's a huge development with a steering wheel that we can see because it has very little to do with the original steering wheel today it's like a high-tech commando unit which means i can access a lot of functions very very quickly and with a new steering wheel generation which is coming for the first time in a new Q4, we've got these touch-sensitive fields and panels. You're speaking of five steering systems now, I guess we'll say, are they crazy at Audi? Well, what, what do you need, five steering systems? Is that overkill or is that a sensible progress? It's the most sensible technical progress because every system has its own steering system. As we heard, the basis is the electromechanical steering. On top of that, we've got what we call the progressive steering. That, of course, also works electromechanically, but with a more direct turning moment. And that means the steering is a lot more direct, much the same as with the dynamic steering. But it, it takes on board more parameters, depending on the speed you're going, then the drive select mode you've selected. And thus, it is the ideal combination for urban driving, where it's very nifty and nimble, very comfortable, but also on straight line cruises or on the bends, it's highly precise. And then, on top of that, we have, of course, well, also rear axle steering to round out the front axle steering. Of course, the top is the dynamic all-wheel steering. Here, we've got the dynamic steering with the so-called superposition steering with the rear axle steering on top. So here we get the best of handling 
and precision all in one steering system. And with that, we really, so to say, lift the physical possibilities to the next level. But we'll hear more about this from Karsten Jabolowski. So what we're learning, plenty of systems, but one philosophy. Exactly. That's how it is. Every steering movement, of course, also tells us something about the character of the vehicle. Tells you, is this a more sporty, is a more comfortable geared vehicle. Thus, in our luxury vehicles, we've got the dynamic all-wheel steering, which, of course, our customers expect in these kind of cars. But the philosophy, as you mentioned it, is always precisely matching three points, no matter which are you driving which segment. First of all, it is effortless. You want to be able to go nimbly through an urban setting. It must be easy to find a parking space that likes. Then, of course, it needs to be precise, especially when cornering and going through the bends. You want to go fast and very precisely through the corner without any play. And of course, on the motorway, where you're going at great speed, it's important that the center position of the steering is very controlled and very stable. Well, thanks, Toby. So far, we will have you later in the Q&A session where you will be back on board. And of course, I hope that you will then send in your question to us. But as of now, you can, of course, use the chat function to send in your questions. We will collect them and we will then later on have them here live in the studio with our answers. And effortless, precise size and controlled is how we continue straight now because let's have a look what our colleagues in the R&D for the steering are doing. Let's roll the clip. I have various interfaces available to me, brake, accelerator. I can use these to influence acceleration and deceleration. But the thing that is absolutely vital is the steering wheel in my hands. The steering wheel is the most important interface between the driver and the vehicle because it gives me direct feedback from the car. There is a list of seven characteristics that apply only to steering feel. It's crucial for us to achieve extremely high precision in this respect. Attributes such as effortlessness that has a bearing on things like parking and how easy it is to negotiate parking garages. We need to make sure that the vehicle is maneuverable and precise, that I can apply even the slightest steering angle, say less than five degrees to the left or right, and the vehicle will give me a response immediately without being twitchy. All it takes is a few meters for customers to feel comfortable in their car because it simply does exactly what they want or what they expect from the car. Those are the key features that we focus special attention on. It takes five years to develop a car from the concept phase to serious production. The process involves defining certain target characteristics to suit the vehicle's positioning. Based on the targets that come out of that, we decide whether we need additional systems such as rear axle steering as used in the Q7 in 2014, or even dynamic all-wheel steering to achieve various ratios on the front axle as well via the drive select system like here in the A7. Then of course development doesn't start in the vehicle right away. First of all, we run simulations and carry out preliminary tuning. To start with, we look at the basic behavior, how the vehicle is responding, how the rear axle is responding. Only then do I take the car to the initial prototype stage because there are a huge number of influencing parameters that just cannot be mapped by numbers and simulations. There are various body shapes, load states, and so on. All of that needs to be considered, and you need to find a good middle ground to ensure that you get the classic Audi steering feel in every situation. Dynamic all-wheel steering is incredibly important because we have integrated rear axle steering. Steering in the opposite direction at low speeds means no longer cutting corners in parking garages. That's the effortlessness and maneuverability that the car gives you. Here we can see that if you put some energy into your steering and build up a decent amount of lateral acceleration, the rear axle will steer as well in a way that doesn't cause what we call a two-phase effect. That means that we feel only what the front axle is doing and then the rear axle follows suit. That improves the driving experience and has a huge beneficial impact on the feeling of safety at this point. Feedback is important as well. First of all, I want to feel feedback from the road surface through the steering wheel. Then I want to know how much more potential force I have on the front axle. When I go around a bend in winter, I want to feel when I'm starting to lose grip and when I'm getting understeer. I need to know how the balance is and whether I'm reaching the limit. These are things that are important when it comes to feedback.
unser Lenkungs Our steering guru, Carsten, he is right with us in the studio. It's a great job you've got, really cool, sassy. I mean, to drive these cars, test them, but of course, to develop the steering system is a lot of responsibility, isn't it? Because people could be quite annoyed if you don't get it right. Indeed, you're quite right. Yes, it is a cool job, by all means. But as you say, I mean, of course, the steering is always very focal in the experience of a driver, and you therefore get a lot of feedback from testers and drivers whether you've got it right or not. Indeed, you spoke at the end of the dynamic all-wheel steering. That's the top-line technology when it comes to steering. What is so typical for that system? Well, let's start by looking at the system because, as we heard, is of course at the front axle here a conventional steering column. Then you can see it here, the superposition gear here at this position that can help you to actually slightly add the steering angle that you're driving or that the driver is indicating. With that, we can tweak the steering ratio so always have the right ratio depending on the speed that the car is going. Can be very direct when you go, for example, in a parking space in a parking garage with the so called power steering support. And of course, at greater speeds, it's a more indirect, it's less supported, which of course helps you greatly with the precision on straight line driving. That's the aid of the superposition gearing at the front axle. And this dynamic always steering is something we find in A6, A7, and A8. And now, what we have here is indeed a full and complete drivetrain of the A7 Extra. So, Carsten, tell us, tell us exactly where do you find the steering systems hidden here? Indeed, as I already mentioned, the conventional steering can be found down here, for example. Here you can see that's the input shaft underneath the engine. That's really that powers the front axle together with the superposition gearing. And as you see here, the steering column is, of course, part and parcel of the front axle steering system. But the second important component is the rear axle steering. As you can see here nicely on the rear axle carrier fitted next to it. And that allows us to simply increase the nimbleness of the vehicle. At low speeds, we can actually steer in the opposite direction with up to five degrees. And thus shorten the turning circle by a full meter. And at greater speeds, that means we go in the same steering angle as in the front and thus we offer extra stability precision and great drive dynamics now the interplay between these two systems is made possible with our electronic chassis platform it's a control unit a super complex control unit that allows us to really take the required steering angles that we need at the front and the rear axle and to calculate them to compute them and to actuate them in such a way that you have this very harmonious interplay between these two steering systems at front and rear. Now, Carson, I believe everything you say, but look, we've got professionals listening to us and they can say, of course, you can put a lot of stuff in the car, but if you don't get the right tires on the car, it won't work. Absolutely right what you say there. Of course, you can do whatever you want, but the most important element between the car and the tarmac is the tire. And that's why I want to show you today what special aspect and what consideration we have to give to the tire when we look and talk about the steering. Now, the Audi fine-tuned tires, especially fine-tuned for Audi, are of course also considered when it comes to the steering behavior. So. The tire is adjusted to the steering and vice versa, the steering to the specific tire in a given car. To this end, we've got a little animation to show you because it can indicate to you what that means at these well, very short time intervals. Because what happens when you steer with the front and the rear tires? What you can see here is the driver begins to steer in and that steer torque is then through the column brought forward to the track rod to the so-called wheel carriers from where it then reaches the actual tire. So what happens? What happens really? And that's really of interest here. You will see it next. That first of all, at the front axle, due to the steering angle and the inertia of the front end of the car, you have, as you will see in a second on the animation, wait here, if we zoom in, now you can see the tires slightly deform. So you've got the steering angle to the left, the tire slightly deforms, the front end turns left, only then with a lag, the same will happen at the rear axle, because of course the rear axle trails the front axle. And now this time sequence or this time lag is just a, a, a few hundred milliseconds that we're talking about. This is something that you try to keep as short as possible. And you will notice this as a driver. You will notice this time lag in every situation. 
if, well, even if we only notice it, so to say, subconsciously. Well, this rear axle steering is something quite exotic and quite new for many customers and drivers. And I can imagine that many of our journalists or the colleagues from the media have not even tested yet, would like to test that rear axle steering. Can you at least explain to us how it works? Indeed, indeed. The rear axle steering is something you will notice, particularly when you, for example, go into a parking place and try to put the car into a slot. But as you can see, what we call the fast rear axle, as we call it, is here actually what we try to make possible with the rear axle steering. And as we just saw before, the driver gives a steering moment into the front axle. Happens in any car, with the conventional steering. But now with the electric ECP chassis platform, we now have the possibility to access the rear axle steering. So at the moment the driver begins to steer in, we will have the rear axle follow in the same direction, and thus we can really skip that time lag. So when I begin to steer in at the front and the tire begins to deform the profile of the tire, I already can have the tire at the rear go in the same direction. So as we precondition the rear axle, and the rear axle will actually react a lot more spontaneous. This, in turn, means I've got this enormous safety addition and stability, so the rear is not trailing the front end. And, well, as I say, it gives me extra stability, extra comfort, and extra drive dynamics. Here once more, the comparison between the conventional steering and the rear axle steering system with the dynamic always steering system on board. Now, if you found this was a bit too fast, a bit too complex, don't worry. You'll get all that material, all the videos in the Audi Media Center for you to peruse in all peace and quiet. So you can actually check them up for your own contributions and work. Now, Carson, if the journalists are testing the cars and if they come to try out the steering, they will often talk about the feedback, as we often hear. Everybody wants to have that feedback from a steering. How do you make sure you get that feedback? Well, look, feedback is something where you feel a lot of things. First and foremost, you want to give the driver some kind of information about the tarmac situation through the steering wheel. There's two key elements. It's the force is acting on the front axle, the lateral force. How much of that can you can convey when, when, when you begin to reach a limit, when it's going to begin to understeer? And, of course, also the vertical excitations. For that, you need, of course, well, software and you need the corresponding steering column, all of which we are deploying. At the end of the day, of course, in combination with our high-end dynamic all-wheel steering, we can also actually adjust the feedback in the drive select modes. So when we talk about feedback, there's a lot of engineering prowess in that, but I also want to want to come to talk about the object in itself, namely the steering wheel itself. And a lot has happened with the steering wheel when it comes to, well, the material that we use and the functionalities. To which end I welcome my colleague Marcel Buch. Now Marcel, you are responsible for the steering wheel development. Oh, is that right? Indeed. The steering wheel, the key interface between man and machine. Over the last decades, it's really changed a lot from the pure steering wheel to a high-tech commando unit. What you can see here is a steering wheel from 1986, as it was used in the Audi 80. The steering wheel is based on a composite steel skeleton and just has two, well, functions. Steering, the direction you want to have the car go, and the horn, if you want to honk the horn. Very quickly, you can see how it changed. At the start of the 90s, Namely, in 1991, to be precise, the Audi 100 had the first airbag in the steering wheel. And what I've got here is the steering wheel of the next generation, by all means, from 1996. Because, as you can see, a massive driver airbag in the middle integrated into the steering wheel. And the first pedals here on the side that simply helped you to go up and down with volume and to skip on your entertainment system. What you see now is the steering wheel of the current generation, the one you will find in the Q4 e-tron. Now, this steering wheel is based on a magnesium die cast, which you can see here nicely as a round steering wheel. Now, magnesium die cast is substantially lighter while having the same stiffness and rigidity and extremely good damping characteristics. Next to it, this steering wheel, as you see here, has these touch panels integrated. So on the one hand, you can activate the virtual cockpit and the entire infotainment system, just as the integrated steering wheel heating. On top of that, you will find you have the hands-on detection integrated 
in the steering wheel, which means it helps you to well support the driver assistance systems and gives you extra safety and comfort with using driver assistance systems. Wow, dear colleagues, hands-on detection. That, that, that's something that you will see coming your way in future, and you will then, well, as it says, the car will detect whether you've got a hands-on steering wheel or not. And Marcel, of course, this is exciting, especially in combination with the driver assistance systems. Can you tell us a little more what that means? Yes, look, we've got this cutaway model here. We brought that with us because it can show you very well how we've implemented the hands-on detection. As we said, it's a capacitive hands-on detection, and you can see it here at the top what that means. We've got this mat completely integrated into the steering wheel rim, also foamed with this capacitive field so that you can detect the grip of a hand. And not just a simple grip, but also even the lightest grip. So if you just put two fingers on a steering wheel, it's absolutely adequate for the car to notice there's somebody there and the driver assistance system will be up and running. If you take the hands away, though, by legal stipulations, after 15 seconds, a warning signal must be emitted to warn the driver, look, put your hands back on the steering wheel. And this function is used, for example, for lateral and for straight line functions, for the lane assist functions, for the lane change functions, as well as for the emergency assist. Well, that means what we can learn from this is that with all the driver assistance systems that we already have in the cars, such a hands-on detection can be, well, a very, well, but we, we find numerous and quite increasing take-up rates. So that much engineering prowess in this little steering wheel. Now, you also want it to look good. What about the design? How, how, do, you, how do you match these two requirements? Well, as you can see, there is so much technology in the steering wheel, but nonetheless, we still work very closely with the designers and the ergonomic guys at a very early concept phase to make sure that we really take care that the whole thing has the right ergonomic and design layout. Now, the most critical elements are, of course, as you will see here, the airbag area with the entire gas generator, the airbag lid cover, and of course, the bag itself. And if you just compare that with what you saw there at the older scene, was a lot has happened just in the way of the materials used as well as the special compression and folding technologies have really gone huge strides forward to reduce that package in total size. Now, what we've added accordingly into the steering wheel are the vital areas, the switches, the panels here, has to do with the spoke width and, of course, the entire geometry of the wheel rim. Have a look at this kind of steering wheel at your next test. It's incredible how much is packed into the steering wheel. Just the airbag is fitted into the steering wheel. All that technology. And it still looks as if it's made from well, just one cast. There's not a fold. There's not a seam. Nothing that you could detect. Because, of course, in the case, if that should be, and we'll have a look at this in animation, the airbag must explode. Indeed, it must. And as I said, the materials are vitally important. As you see here, the airbag must come out at lightning speed in, in the flash of an eyelash. And I mean, this 40 milliseconds, it's as I say, an eyelash. And that's why I've shown you this in this extreme slow motion. And on top of that, of course, with the split line and with the opening kinematics, it's all very much a matter of the interplay between the visibility. You should not be able to see this with your eyes and the functionality during a crash that works hand in glove. And this over a temperature band of minus 35 to plus 30, 85 degrees Celsius. If you're interested, if you've got questions, send them in or just take a note what you want to discuss with us later because we want to hear from you, your opinion, that's the purpose of this Audi Tech Talk. Now, Marcel, I've got big hands, as you can see. And of course, you've got women with small hands driving at the steering wheel. And for all of them, it must be a match and a fit. They should be able to reach all the functions. So what about the ergonomics? That's quite a challenge. Indeed. With the ergonomics, it's, first of all, all these functions integrated in the steering wheel need to be easily accessible. And of course, also a certain redundancy to the center console that you can operate it from either. So what's important here is the grip area. For example, here, your wrist rest 
or the thumb cavity. That's very ergonomically, as you see here. And from there, you must be able to reach all the functions that are also here positioned at easy reach, whether it's the paddles, whether it's the panels, whether it's all these switch functions. And next to it, of course, what you see here is also the geometry of the rim. A very important point here, also for the ergonomics, is, as you see here, diameter of the rim. You see it here. It's oval in shape, which is your natural grip of the hand. 30 to 36 millimeters in size. Very good to feel. Good touch and feel. And that's what we can actually realize with the implementation of the technology you have in the rim. Now, if the one of the other you may ask, can you also get this in round? Indeed, you can have it also in a round shape. Now, Carsten, we haven't forgotten you. We saw how elegant you were driving that car at that test drive. What's for you important when you touch a steering wheel? Well, as Marcel said, the handling is vitally important, but also the position of the steering wheel in the car. What's the angle, the inclination of my steering column? And for this, of course, we've, we've got certain parameters. It's 22 to 24 degrees at which we position the steering column in an SUV and 70 to 21 degrees with the flat floor vehicles where you sit, of course, lower so that you always have an optimal grip. And, of course, also the option to adjust the steering column here by, what is it, 30 millimeters and that you have the car really the best way under control. Next to the design, what, what, what's the reason of these, these flat-bottomed steering wheels? Well, look, these, these flattened steering wheels, I mean, is something that, that simply allow you to access the car easier and to get out quicker. But next to it, aesthetically, they are so sporty. Our designers love them and our customers love them. They really come from, from, from sport, motorsports. Indeed, indeed, that's what you see in the cockpits of motorsport cars. And the form is just, uh, well, it just looks sazzier and sportier. And that's why for the Q4, we've decided that we also have it flattened at the top, as you see here nicely, which of course looks very well as a match for the interior design to stress the horizontal lines of the Q4. Sometimes you step foot in a car, and I'm sure you also know this, I mean, you drive so many cars, you test so many cars, I think you could you go, go blindfolded into the car, touch the steering wheel, and you would know instantly this is an Audi. But what characterizes a typical Audi steering wheel? What you said, that's exactly what, you, what we want to achieve, that the moment you hold a steering wheel in your hand, you know this is an Audi steering wheel. We've got about 200 variants, different materials, different colors, different functional setup. But one thing they all have in common, that is it is the sporty look of the steering wheel, the high functionality of the steering wheel, and thus the top quality that we have in our vehicles. Next to that, of course, what we also offer is all the functions can be intuitively accessed and operated. And what we put great stress on is the extreme filigree spokes that are aesthetically good looking are very sporty and of course also stand out next to our competitors. What you also find that with the hands-on detection we have a system that is as you see here coated by two foam layers and you will find this across all the steering wheels giving you this great grip. Now with concept cars we can see very well strange steering wheels sometimes even interrupted rim configurations then with a wealth of functions some without any functions on top what, what, what's conceivable? Well especially with an open rim that's not an option for us today because we've got these enormous turning angles when steering, which also means you want to have a full rounded steering wheel. And we don't want to make sure, well, we want to make sure that if you really have a big turning circle, you, you don't want to actually grip into, into nowhere. And what we also say, for us, you have to have the right number of functions in the steering wheel. Everything that's often and quickly handled and operated is to be found on the steering wheel or on the steering column switches. Not too many, not too few. Looking ahead in the future, what's the difference between now and then? And what about those in the future, especially if I think of autonomous driving? And I mean, Marcel, I've seen cars also from us, they had no steering wheel at all. Indeed, you're quite right. It will have a major bearing, autonomous driving, on our work. We will see more and more assistance functions coming into the car, more and more complex, highly autonomous functions coming to the car, and that will have a very significant bearing on the interior design. Because, of course, 
the task of driving will become less for the human driver, which means the steering wheel will change with the interior. That means the design will be modified, will change, but of course also the functionality will change. We will get extra functions, more complex functions integrated in the future steering wheels, but other functions will probably be omitted in future from the steering wheel. But I think one thing is certain. We will always have a steering wheel and it will always be important. Now that's the question we would like to discuss with you. Would you love to continue to steer in future yourself? Or, I mean, what we can hear from you, Carsten, what is the key challenge for you looking forward? Well, as was said, if the steering wheel loses significance, it's important that, of course, changes of direction, if the car can do that itself, and I don't have to initiate it with my steering movement, you want to have this to be achieved almost unnoticed, that, that you are, so to say, as the driver, so to say, uncoupled from the steering movement. But I believe that most people will keep to say, well, I like to hold the steering wheel myself, and this means our philosophy, the steering feel is something you will see going forward. Maybe a, a little more sportiness and directness, which we will focus on. Thanks, Carsten. Thanks, Marcel. You've done that excellent again. Very precise, effortless, and very controlled here. Thank you also to you for joining us once again online in this Audi Tech Talk for steering. We'll be back soon again with the next Tech Talk. See you then.